Krishna, come quick. There are just the two this year, then? Yes, a boy and a girl, the youngest here by quite a bit. Both around eight, we think. You think? Well, when the parents are deceased. We understand. And what are these children like? What are they like? They are undisciplined, contrary, far too attached to each other. They... They are listening to every word we say. Alina, Mal, come down here at once! Do you know who we are? You're witches. Witches? Is that what they teach you at this school? When the leaves change color, do you call it magic? When you cut your hand and it heals. And when you put a pot of water on the stove and it boils, is it magic then? Anyone can boil water. You're very right. Anyone can boil water. But not just anyone can master the small science. That's why we've come to test you. No. <laughs> I almost made it. I almost made it. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe. And I'm Mary. And, and we're, we're Book Buds. Buds. And today, Mary is going to discuss a series that she loves, the Shadow and Bone trilogy by Lee Bardugo. I love this trilogy. I'm not going to spoil it because I want you to read this one. I think you would really enjoy it. Okay, cool. Yes. And I know a lot of people out there have read this too. <laughs> yes, it's very popular. Yeah. Right? Especially with a new show that's out. Yeah. Well, it. yeah, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, um, I like to compare books. So, like, what is this like? Is it like Crew Prince? Is it like Caraval? Is it like something that we know already? Is it like... Um, so I, I would compare this to Red Queen, but you didn't read that oh, one either. Okay. But I really loved Red Queen, and yes. it was like definitely an adventure and mm -hmm. really just fast-paced, awesome. And this was right up there with it. So, okay. But I can't compare it to something that you've read that I know something that you've like read. That. Yeah. Okay. But I loved it, loved it, loved it. All right. <clears throat> so you definitely have to read it. I want to hear about it. So first I'll talk about the first book, which is Shadow and Bone. I got into it right away. I did make the mistake of picking up Six of Crows before this, and Six of Crows comes after this trilogy. So I was like 100 pages in, and I had to stop when somebody corrected me on it. I was like, oh my God. So I put it mm. down, picked this one up. It didn't spoil anything by reading them out of order because it's different characters, different time, and all of that. But when I finally finished the trilogy and went back to Six of Crows, there were things that like reminisced about this series. So if you're going to read them, read the series first. Okay. Is this a series or just a one book? Yeah, there's two books for that. Okay. And I think there's talk of a third. Okay. Okay. So Shadow and Bones, you saw in our scene, we've got Alina and Mal, they're the main characters, and Alina particularly is the main character. Um, and so these are orphans from, there was a border war and their parents were killed and they're living in an orphanage together. Um, and Gr Grisha magic is something that you don't know if you have it or not. Mm -hmm. um, at a certain age, people come and they test to see if you have it and then things go from there. So the two of them ended up being drafted into the military and they were off on this adventure going through something called the fold, which is pure darkness. There's like all these mm. evil creatures that lurk in the darkness. You can't see your hand in front of your face. You have to go with like lots of lights to try and see around you. But once you have these lights on, there's these creatures that fly in. They look sort of like human dragons. Mm. And they, that's the way I pictured them. I don't know if that's what they're described as. But that's how I pictured them. Yes, creepy. And they swoop in and attack and like kill. Yeah, so they're only repelled by light, I think is how it works. So they, you want to get through the fold safely. And something happens as they're journeying through the fold. And that's like the whole big bang to the beginning of the book mm. where Alina goes to protect Mal. And all of a sudden you see she has a power that was dormant that we didn't know about. Okay. So Alina does have some Grisha power. That's not spoiling because that's like in the description and everything in the book. And I feel like that's a trope, no? Yeah, totally. <laughs> we like that kind of thing. Yeah. So then, of course, you know, she's set into a world without Mal where he's just an ordinary guy and she's whisked away to all this glamour. She has all these fancy dresses to wear and she's being trained in like a, you know, a fancy royal manner and whatnot. Um, going to all these classes to learn about stuff. And she's associating with all these other snobs that have this power and whatnot. There's mm. all this division between the different types of people that have the powers, right? Mm. So let me tell you about the powers, just so you get a sense of like the types of magic. Each of these have like their own kind of word, and I know I'm not going to say them right at all. I don't bother to pronounce them as I'm reading, you know? So this is the first time I'm going to try and say them. <laughs> Corporalki? That's one type. <laughs> whatever that is <clears throat> and this type they have heart rend heart renders and healers so a heart render is somebody that 
can like feel your heart beating and they can just stop your heart from beating. So they like reach into you physically and can just slow your pulse, knock you out to make you unconscious or they can kill you just by making your heart stop. Oh, so they're a great warrior, right? Um, also in this class, you have a healer. So if you have any injury, they can fix you up. They can also beautify you, like tail your face, give you nice lines and different colors in your skin, erase the bags under your eyes and things like that. So that's right. nice. That's nice, <laughs> I like that. Then you have the ethereal key, the order of the summoners. That's much easier to say. Um, this one is the squalors, the inferi, and the tide maker. So the squalors control wind. If we had some squalors here right now, we would settle the wind so that we don't have like this wind noise on camera. <laughs> that was good, man. <laughs> um, tide makers control the water so they mm -hmm. can like make big waves and knock people out. And then in fury is controlling fire. <clears throat> so good warriors. And then you have the materialki, which is the fabricators. And there's two different kinds. And honestly, I had to look up how they were different because in the books, it didn't like stand out in my mind as how they were different. One can manipulate metals and fabrics and glass. They can make like this really like bulletproof glass that's like indestructible. So mm. anything that's made by a fabricator is strong, really strong. So you can want, want like a really good defensive shell for something, they're the ones to make it. Um, and then the others, um, they deal with poisons and blasting powders. Blasting powders, okay. Yes. Okay, so those are your different types. And Alina is a summoner. And that's really all I'm gonna say, because I don't wanna spoil anything, but she's a summoner. Um, but she's very special, of course. So in this book, of course, you have the person that doesn't know that they have magic and they end up being like the most important person with magic, mm -hmm. right? Um, so the Darkling is in this book and you don't really know in the beginning, is he a good guy, is he a bad guy? Um, he ends up being a bad guy. I don't feel like that's spoiling. I mean, his name's Darkling, so right? We're yeah. going to kind of guess that. Yes. <laughs> um, but he controls a lot of darkness and he can like ooze darkness out of his skin and he can make you invisible if you're walking through a crowd just by kind of like passing darkness over you and things like that. So did he make the fold? I don't know. Because that's darkness? That's a good question. Mm. Mm. <laughs> You'll have to read it to find out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good question. Where did that darkness come from? Um, but so he's, he's definitely a cool character. I love the way that all these different characters were written. Even the supporting characters were really very interesting. So I have a question. Yeah. Alina in our scene was a young girl. So is the book start off when she was a kid? No, that was just like the very first chapter. I think she's okay. like 18 years old oh, when the adventure okay. begins. All right. Yeah. So you do have a little bit of romance because she's that age where you're going to have romance. And um, there's some interest in a couple different people, as there always is. In the boy? In a book like these. Mal, of course, because he's like her friend from life. But he's just so ordinary and attractive and perfect that, like, everybody loves him. And she's so blah. Nobody notices her. So she doesn't really feel like he even notices her, you know? Until she gets her magic. Until she gets her magic, maybe. And then, um... <laughs> maybe. Uh, that's maybe. Uh, <laughs> and then the Darkling, um, he's drawn to her, the magic that she possesses. So she ends up being drawn to him as well. So there's you know, a couple different interests going on there. Just the right amount of romance for Mary to love this and not so much that Joe's going to be like, ugh, I don't want to read this. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so there's the basic gist of this story is that it's like a they go on a quest for a magical item and there's lots of adventure through the whole thing. And that quest, there's different quests for each book. Okay. okay. So that brings us to book two. Love it. So book two is Siege and Storm and they're on a different magical quest. Um... And each book has like a little bit of a different vibe. So they're off on this quest and they are being hunted at this point. They've broken away and they're off on their own um, and they're on the run. So they are trying to dis disguise their identity. They are trying to disguise the power and just stay on the down low, but also still be out on this important quest. And they connect with a really cool character who's a privateer. Um, he's a lot of fun, very interesting guy. And he's got like all sorts of tricks up his sleeve really enjoyed him and and what was involved with him so when you get to him those of you that know what i'm talking about he's awesome um and then the love triangle kind of stuff goes on between the darkling and mal and alina wow. and there's even though she might not be in the presence of all of them all the time there's still like a way that that's connected and mm -hmm. can continue on throughout the story so it concludes with ruin and rising um and this one is kind of bleak 
it's a dark it starts out very dark because she doesn't have access to her powers she's struggling they're not sure if they're gonna make it they're a very small group trying to go and right the wrongs and all of those things save the day and it's just tough going really tough going mm. uh, but again really great characters loved the adventure loved the characters I just I have no complaints about this series mm. at all really mm. really loved it and I just finished Six of Crows loved that as well and I'll talk about that another day maybe but really really awesome series if you haven't read it yet which I'm sure so many people have but if you haven't read it yet I highly recommend it so were these fast easy reads these were easy reads because I tore through them these were like a good fit for me so I absolutely tore right through them yeah yeah all right yeah well I'm looking forward to this this sounds this sounds better than some of the other ones that yeah that you've reviewed that I haven't read. Yes, put this on your New Year's list for TBR. Oh my God, I'm excited. All right, <laughs> cool. <laughs> so those of you that have read this out there, let us know what you thought of the series as well. And if you're enjoying Book Buds, give us a thumbs up. And share us with your friends. And subscribe to our channel. Book Buds! Golly gee, that sounded like a great book. Be sure to subscribe. Bridges. You're witches! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do a kid's voice unless it's that one. You're well, I'm a boy, but he's You're witches. You're witches. How about like a little feisty boy? You're witches. <laughs> <laughs> no? No. Why? No. What am I gonna say? You're witches. <laughs> what did I say about boiling water? Anyone can boil water. Is that that good? That's great for you. Anyone can boil water. But you don't like mine. Do it again. You're witches! <laughs> it doesn't sound like a little boy. Oh. Yep, that's related. Oh, it's not the series? Nope. Oh. It's the second series. Okay. So, when I say we're talking about the trilogy, just put this one forward. Mm -hmm. Hold one, two, three. Like, okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to put it there, Stacey? So you, uh, yeah, you want to like rehearse? That. Yeah. <laughs> I can't understand English. <laughs> Holy shit.